you, Lord. God has been good to me. Yes, he has. And I thank him for it. Father, as we stand before you this moment, we stand giving thanks, glory, and honor unto you, recognizing you for who you are, an awesome God, a mighty God, the only God, and we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for our life, our health, our strength, the activity of our limbs, the soundness of our mind, but most of all, God, we thank you for salvation today. We thank you that we have a privilege. We have the honor. We have the right to come before your presence and to worship you and to thank you and to love you for who you are in our lives. Father, we thank you for this day, for this is a day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And now, Father, I ask that you anoint these lips of clay as I move myself out of the way. I allow your precious Holy Spirit to minister unto us today. Give us that that we need to make it through this day, to stand in assurance and in confidence that we are children of the Most High God. And there's nothing in this world that can keep us from going forward in you and being victorious in you. So, Father, we thank you right now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I love the Lord today, saints, and I thank and praise God for each and every one of you here this morning. I love you. I give glory and honor unto my heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the precious Holy Spirit who leads and guides me each and every day of my life, to Bishop Simmons, our First Lady, Minister Cynthia Simmons, to each and every one of you here, for my husband, praise God, for, for my children, for, I just thank God for all of y'all. For all of you, you're all family. I love you. For those who was with us yesterday, thank y'all. Thank y'all for blessing me. Praise God. It was a little tight at one moment, but God just showed himself real as he always does. And we were on the ferry going over and the overcast came up and I sat there on the boat and I prayed. I said, Father, let your sun shine on us today. Just let it be a beautiful day for everyone. And before we got over into Delaware, the sun was shining bright, real bright. Sat under the umbrella and it came down on me. I said, I'm not going to complain, Father, because I asked for it and I thank you. I thank you for the sun. And it was a beautiful day. Thank you all again for having a, I pray everyone had a blessed time. And we did, we just enjoyed ourselves. But I thank and praise God. For this opportunity, I was sharing with some of the young ladies that were that are going to be up this afternoon, and um, I was they were saying, you know, I'm nervous, and I said, well, that's good, be nervous, because when you're nervous, that means you know you can't do it. You let God do it, and thank you. My eyes are really, I don't know what's wrong with them this morning. They're watering. It must be something in the air, the allergies or whatever, but my eyes are watering, and my throat got scratchy before I came out my voice was starting to go on me. And I said, Crystal, what you got in your bag? I'm starting to lose my voice. So she, you know, gave me one of her concoctions and praise God, it kind of, my throat, it just got dry. I didn't have a cough, but everything was getting dry and raspy on me. But I thank and praise God for this opportunity. And I, I was telling them, I said, when we get nervous and scared, that means we know we can't do it. And we have to rely on God. So saints, as much as I've been up here and for as long as I've been doing this, yes, I do. I get scared, nervous to the point of feeling like I'm going to pass out. But I said, Lord, you do what you have to do. And I thank him for that. Um, this is for my nephew, Justin. And I told him I was going to give him a shout out this morning. His favorite scripture, that's what the Lord gave me to minister on this morning. What you sow you will reap what you sow you will reap bishop i thank god i do i thank god for you i thank god for you being in my life in my family my big brother my pastor my bishop and i i see god working in him and through him and saints let me tell y'all something we may not understand some of the things he say and some of the things he does, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is leading him. 
The Lord gave me, I, don't, I at first was wondering why, Lord, you were leading me this way because I missed service on, on last Sunday, not that I couldn't go on the web and try to get to the website to, to, to watch it, but my life outside of this, including this, has become so busy. And I'm like, Lord, what, what happened all of a sudden that I'm doing so much? But it's okay because it's all to the glory and honor of God. But um, I heard about the pledge through my dear husband. Um, when I came home, he told me, he says, uh, just want you to know that uh, you made a pledge to the church. I said, I made a what? <laughs> I said, what did I do? He said, yeah. I said, well, how much did I pledge? Well, um, uh, here's the list. And I looked, I said, uh-uh. No, you can't put my pledge down. So I nicely took my name off of his, with his. I said, that's your pledge. I said, the Lord has to lead me in what I have to give. The Lord touched your heart to put that down. That's your pledge. Now the Lord will touch my heart and I can put my pledge down. So I thank God for... Now, let, let me explain to y'all the way the Lord explained it to me. When a pastor gets up and starts talking the way Bishop is talking now. It's because something's coming down the pike. It has nothing to do with him wanting your money, okay? Nothing to do with that, because whenever I would hear that, okay, now being the, the financial secretary here at New Life, I kind of understand a little about it, but I used to hear it and I'm like, what do they need all this money for? My goodness. Well, the Lord began to show me something. When we learn to give, and Bishop said this a long time ago, and whether he even knew, I know he knew what he said, but remembering what he said, that if you can give God your money, you can give him your life. That means you trust him with everything. Because in this world system, you need monies to make it. You need currency. You need to have that cash to flow in order for you to pay your gas bill, your electric bill, your water bill, your mortgage, your rent, your car note, whatever it is. You got to have that money in place. What you sow, you will reap. Got home last night a little before 930 and I said, Lord, I didn't get my scriptures together. Father, which way you want me to go with this? He gave me that one verse. So I said, a garden. So I started checking on, what do you first do to start your garden? A lot of people think you just dig up the soil, plant some seed, keep the rocks and weeds, you know, try to keep the, the groundhogs and the moles and whatever else out of the way from eating them. Well, I found out that you first have to check the pH of the soil, depending on what it is you're going to plant. So what is the pH of the soil? And as I was reading that, Genesis, the second chapter, came to mind. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. So what is your pH today? You can be too acidic. You can be too basic, too extreme. You need to be neutral. And the, the, the scale, the pH scale, and a lot of chemists and some of our RNs should know this because of the medications and stuff and how they have to treat the, the human body and all with medications or whatever they take, where the scale starts at zero and goes to 14, which means you've got to be right in the center, seven. That's perfect. Our pH balance, our body. A lot of us who are walking around sick, aching, always getting colds and everything, your pH balance is probably too low, which means you're in the, the acidic, you're, you're, acid, you're too much acid in your body. And disease grow in that environment, okay? So this is making you sick, and you're wondering, why, Lord, I'm taking all this medicine? Well, you're just adding more acid to your system and making it worse. Where the Lord has arranged it where our pH balance, and Crystal's always checking hers, and I said, well, you know, give me some strips so I can check, my, check mine, make sure I'm at seven, and you can buy them at, you know, the, the health stores and make sure your pH is right. Now, speaking on a spiritual level, before we get there, let's go back to growing our garden. I used to hear, and I used to say it myself, when I gave my offering, I gave money, 
And I would say a lot of us was expecting money back because we sowed money, but God is going to bless us however which way he sees fit to bless us. And I used to say that. But the word of God says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth. Now, I want a plant, a vineyard. Not to make wine. I like grapes. And red grapes are very good for us. Let me see if I can get this open. Y'all know I like doing my illustrations sometimes. Right? Okay, now, I go in my little bag, and I keep my seeds when I eat my fruit, and, and I got pepper seeds in here. And I want to plant a vineyard. So I get my grape seeds. See if I can get this so y'all can see it. My grape seeds. And I take them out, and I prepare my soil. pH is right for the grapes. And I plant my grape seed. And it takes a time. And if you go to Genesis, the 8th chapter, and the 22nd verse, this is after the flood. And the Lord made the promise to Noah. Noah and his children, their, his, the children, daughter-in-laws, the wife, came out, and the animals that came up came out with him. And he took the clean um, cattle and the clean fowl, and he sent up an offering to God. And it went up to God as a sweet aroma, and it pleased God. And he said, no longer will I destroy all of mankind and all of plantation that I've put on this earth because of what man does. I'll never do it again. And he put his promise in the sky, which was the bow. He put it in the clouds. So we know that we may have tsunamis or whatever, but it'll never destroy the earth again. But I plant my, my seed. And in Genesis 8:22, it says... As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, winter, summer, cold, heat, day and night, it shall not cease. It will always be. Okay? I plant my grape seed, and the vine starts growing, and they get beautiful, and I have the, the poles in place and the rope connecting so the vines can grow beautiful. And I've been studying about grapes, and I'm going to grow me some grape vines. And um, if I can get rid of those groundhogs. And, and everything's growing beautiful. But all of a sudden, the, the blossoms come out for the fruit. And everything's looking good. It's the, the sand and everything's right for the grapevine. And everything's growing right. Okay. The fruit starts coming out and it looks like this. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, what I planted was supposed to come out like this. Not this. Okay? The Lord knew that I, I wanted, this is what I wanted for the purpose of what I needed it for. So when I plant, or when I, when I plant seed, financial seed, the Lord knows I'm in need of finances, my sacrifice offering is a financial seed. My pledge is a financial seed. So that, whatsoever I plant, that's what's going to come back to me. Now, in different ways, whereas my car will run very well because I'm checking the engine, the oil, making sure it's being changed the way it should, checking, rotating the tires and all, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do so that the monies that I do have stay in pocket. And if that gets too low, the Lord is going to see fit and make a way for those finances to be in place for me. Because I'm walking in obedience and doing what he has called me to do, being who he has called me to be. So when pastor is asking and asking you to direct, teaching us how to give, because as we give, and this is our confession every Sunday, as we give, it is given unto us. Good measure press down. I do this with my rice. I have a container and I'll put a two and a half pound bag of rice in this container and I'll take it and I'll pound it on this counter and shake it and pound it. I can get another bag in there. That's five pounds of rice and I'll bang it down and shake it and I can get a little bit more in there. This is what the Lord is saying to us saints. Don't be afraid when it comes to your money. Because Satan will, this, see, this is the trick that he's going to use to tear down the world. He may even get to some of the saints. 
Because if you hold fast to your money, if your paycheck is that important to you that you can't look at and say, Lord, I trust you. I have this in line. I have that in line. But I can't do it unless you see fit to help me to do this. When we allow the Lord to take that that he has given to us, not ours in the first place, because if it had not been for him, we wouldn't have a job. If it hadn't been for him, checks wouldn't be coming in. So when we are able to trust him to, to take that check, and I've seen him do it. I have looked and go, because I go online a lot to check my account to make sure everything's in place. And I look in there and I'm like, well, where did all this come from? I know what checks I wrote and what bills because I pay a lot online. It shouldn't be that much in there, Father. But the Lord, I don't know how or where, and nobody's putting money unless the Lord is putting it in there. Coleman's not. But he's showing me how he takes and he'll, they, t they t talk about people who squeeze dollar bills and pennies and stretch them. Well, the Lord has taken my finances and stretching them. I've come to a place to know that my tithe does not go in my budget. That's not a part of my budget because that's not my money. I can't budget out God's money. My tithe is set aside before I even start my budget. So what belongs to God, Lord, that's, that's yours to work with. And 10%, I've gotten to a place, and see, I can talk about me because I know how I used to be. I can go beyond the 10% because I've seen what he's done with the 10%. So I've, I'm learning that when the, when the Lord directs the pastor to do a certain thing, get on board. Because something big's about to happen. And when he starts talking finances, it means that Satan is trying to come in and cast fear into the hearts of the people. And stop them from giving the way they need to give. Not so much should give, but the way we need to give. Because of the situations that we sometimes find ourselves in. Lord, how come I don't have? How come this is falling apart? How come this is? Because we're not acknowledging God. And it's not that God needs our money. If the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him, and if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, what does he need from us? Other than our trust in him and our love towards him, our worshiping him, our glorifying him, and taking all that we have. When we say, I give myself away, so... Oh, God, so you can use me? That includes my pocketbook and my wallet. I give myself away, all of me, Lord, when I seek him with my whole heart. I'm going to let you all look at these seeds here. I got some pepper seeds, grape seeds. I even got some watermelon seeds in there. I let them dry out. And there's also a time to sow. You don't plant everything at the same time. I didn't realize there was a fall planting. I didn't realize there was a winter planting. There's a spring and a summer planting. We think we just, oh, plant in the springtime and, and reap a harvest. But every season, you can plant stuff. Didn't realize that. Go online, you learn a lot. You want to really have a nice, beautiful garden? And also learn if you have a, a, a orchards, or not even just an orchard, but if you have fruit trees, you got to prune them. I told you all about my golden delicious tree. The groundhogs are having a field day on my apples. I can't eat them, so I let them eat them because I, I didn't take care of my tree. But I'm going to take care of my tree. I'm going to get my golden delicious back the way it was. This is what God wants us to do. Our soil, okay, when the seed goes forth, the word of God is seed. In Luke, the sixth chapter, and I keep getting ahead of myself. Y'all bear with me. The word of God um, says, Luke 6, where's my glasses? I'm making sure I didn't have them on. I was looking for my glasses the other day, and I had them on my face. That was embarrassing. Coleman didn't catch it, though, because I have two pair. So I was looking for these, and I had the black ones on. But that's a sign of something, isn't it, Bishop? <laughs> Luke 6, 36, 37, and 38 says, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For, for with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Genesis 8.22, which we, we did read, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. And saints, when you plant your seed, remember time. You don't plant seed at night and reap a harvest the next day. So when you plant seed, there's time, and then there's a harvest. Day and night shall not cease. Heat and, well, cold and winter, summer and winter, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Okay, wheat and weeds. Wheat and weeds. Or I could say wheat or weeds. In Luke 8, the fifth chapter, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive word with joy, and these have no root which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And they which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. That's my golden delicious tree. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, Having heard the word, keep it, bringing, fruit, bringing forth fruit with patience. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares, or weeds, also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it, hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Now we're going to go to Galatians, the sixth chapter, 7, 8, and 9. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Galatians 5, 19 through 23. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have, I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control. Against such there is no law. Ephesians 2 and 8, I'm sorry, and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Flesh has nothing to do with our salvation. What are we sowing into our ground, into our soil? I started out with our sowing our monies into good ground. And I believe this church is good ground. But now sowing into this good ground. In preparing our ground to receive seed, which is the word of God, throughout the week, we know a farmer, like I said, have to get that pH, make sure the pH is right, testing the soil. They have to remove stone. They have to pull weeds. They have to plow up the fallow ground and get it soft to receive the seed. This is what we do throughout the week with our hearts, with our minds. We have to get in the word of God and allow the word of God to prepare us to receive when we come on Sunday mornings, on Wednesday nights, on Sunday morning for Sunday school to receive the word. We plant the word of God in our heart. When I was reading, it was talking about the works, now the works of the flesh. But when it came to the spirit, it was fruit. We can't work. There's nothing we can do to earn salvation. You can't work your way into salvation. You have to bear fruit. You have to plant seed in your heart and in your mind so that the enemy can't perform works or get put thoughts in your mind to interrupt the seed. I had shared a few weeks ago about the young man that I had seen on TV, John, um, I think his last name, I want to say Rivera, but I'm not sure, was talking about how he grew up in a satanic family. And all he did was worship Satan from a young child up into an adult. He went to church, satanic church, from 7 at night to 10 in the morning. And they worshiped Satan and got instructions on what it, they were to do to bring down the kingdom of God. Whether it was individuals, whether it was churches, whether it was towns, whether it was cities, whether it was states. They were assigned what to do to stop the work of God from going forth. So what he was assigned to was, it was okay to let them come and sit in the building. Let them sit there. But if word was planted in them, if that seed was planted, because if you look around, saints, everything that we see started with seed, came from a seed. Each and every one of us came from a seed. And his job was to abort God's seed out of us. It was not to be born or brought forth. That was his job. But his job now is planting the seed of the word of God and letting the churches know, we're not up here to preach you happy. We're up here to give you the word to set you free, to get you to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. What he went through, through in his life on this earth, through his death, his burial and resurrection, gave us authority to be able to tread on serpents, to keep Satan under our feet, because we have been given the authority. He said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. So whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. What God is telling us is, you got heaven backing you. We have our children come to us when they're getting started and they'll need us to co-sign to get a car, to co-sign to get their first apartment or whatever it is they're looking to do to get their life started. But look at the co-signers we have. Look at what God has done for us. And this is a guarantee from him. Now on our part, that's why God, when he made the covenant with Abraham, he said, this is my covenant. 
with you. Not giving Abraham to say, you know, okay, this is your covenant. You make a covenant with me. God made the covenant, a covenant that would never be broken. We don't have to worry about his word not being good. We have heaven backing us. So saints, it's time for us to realize that I'm not doing this by myself. It's not my works that's keeping me, that's helping me to go forth. It's not my works that are keeping me, waking me every morning to get up and get on that bus or to get up in the morning to be here. It's by his grace. For by grace are ye saved. So the fruit that he wants us to bear so one another can see, so the world can see. He's brought us out of a kingdom of darkness and placed us in a kingdom of light. So we shouldn't be hiding. Our light should be shining forth so all could see because his glory is supposed to be shining forth in us and through us. That's the life we live. We shouldn't be hiding. If we mess up, which we're going to, don't run away from God. Run to him. Be here. I messed up. Do you have to tell everybody? No, you shouldn't tell everybody, especially if you don't want your business out in the streets. And some of us are like the freezer that our evangelist turned off. <laughs> Turned that freezer off and all that meat and juices that ran down and thawed out. Once it was frozen, you couldn't smell it. But when it thawed out, the heat hit it, and Lord, we smelled exactly what it was like. So when the heat hits, you start getting the smell. Now, when we come to the Lord, okay, our minister of music was saying, our praise is our sacrifice. And I said in the beginning, when Noah came off the ark, and they were on that ark for a long time, they didn't have showers and stuff and everything going on in there. But when he came off that ark and he offered up that sacrifice to God, it was a sweet aroma in the nostrils of God. And it pleased him so that he said, I'll never do this again. I will never do this again. It almost made me think, Lord, it, it opened your eyes. And he saw, but God knew. He knew what he was doing. He knows what he's doing. But man pleased him so in that sacrifice, in that offering. Now, what kind of week are we living that when we come, and we offer our sacrifice of praise because sacrifice is placed on fire. It gets hot. And just like I said, as long as it's cold, that freezer, you didn't smell it. We was opening and closing it all day, all morning. But when she turned off the power, the electricity, and the heat got to it, it got warm, the smell came up. And it wasn't a sweet aroma. Now think about throughout the week. Lord, the life that I lived, when I came here this morning and I gave my offering to you, my sacrifice of praise, what kind of aroma went up to heaven on my part? On my part. Because I have to sacrifice for me. I have to offer up for me. So when we come before him in this place and praise him, our praise dictates how we please him. And we shouldn't be begged. We shouldn't be coerced. We shouldn't be pushed. Because if we made it through a week and made it back into this place, back into my seat in his presence, then my praise should be such a sweet aroma in his, that, I mean, the inhabiting, the power of God inhabiting our praises should be to a place where we couldn't stand it in the flesh. Saints, do we understand that? Are we praising him out of tradition? Or are we praising him in spirit and in truth with our whole hearts? Because sometimes we get lax. And sometimes the cares of this world, and remember about the seed that I was reading about, that sower, and he sowed his seed and the way, it, the different areas where it fell. Don't let the cares of this life choke out the seed that's being planted in you. That hope that God has planted in us. That promise that he has given us. And that's not just in the sweet by and by. That's living right here and now. Because his word tells me that as Jesus is, as Jesus is, where is he? Seated in heavenly places. 
right at the right hand of our Father. He's in heaven in an awesome place. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. So that gives me to know I'm seated in heavenly places. Yeah, I may be walking around on this earth, and yeah, I may be, you know, doing my job and everything, but my mindset, I've planted seed in good soil. So the seed is springing up, and the fruit is coming forth, and it's bearing 30, and as I mature, it bears 60, and as I get even better, I'm bearing 100-fold. So as I grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I get to a place where this world don't bother me anymore. And I was telling my sister, maybe it's an age thing. It is an age thing. It's aging in him. It's aging in him. When we age in the word of God, saints, the cares of this world, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit is there to give you the answer to whatever you need. Everything. I was sharing with different ones. Um, the Lord blessed me uh, Thursday morning. Was it Thursday morning? Yeah, Thursday morning. I got a call from the garage, bus, gar bus garage, and the head mechanic said, Shirley, need you down here. And they know I do not like going to that garage. I said, okay, Jeff, I'll be there when I finish my second run in the morning. So I take my time. I go to the pumps, fuel up my bus, sweep it out, fix my seatbelts, and talk with a few of the drivers, and I go down, and I said, okay, here I am, what you need? And they're asking me, what are you here for? What do you want? I said, I don't want anything. He called me. Why am I here? So um, they said, let's go get Jeff and see what he wants. So I said, Jeff, what's up? He says, go in the back and get your piece of junk. I said, I'm driving a piece of junk. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got something worse you're giving me? So that just goes in the back, piece of junk. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're 56D, right? I said, yeah. I said, it's here. A 2014 brand new bus sitting on the lot. I said, what? It only had 1,006 miles on it. And I think that was from them testing it and getting it to the garage. So I look at it and I go through it. And I mean, if you've ever sat in a new car and had that new car smell, y'all got to sit on a new bus <laughs> and smell a new bus smell. I looked at it and I said, Father, thank you. Well, this thing, it has an alarm system. It's all digital. Never seen an all digital bus. And I'm like, how am I going to work this thing? Well, I saw the ones that got their buses last year. And when they didn't set them right, the alarm, the, the lights are blinking, the horn's beeping. I'm like, that is not happening to me. They ain't not putting me in that position. It's embarrassing, saints, to be sitting in a bus and the horn is constantly blowing. Well, I get mine Thursday. And I'm driving. It shows how to set the alarm and everything. Well, he didn't really explain it to me properly, so I had no clue. And I'm driving this bus, did my run and everything, got it home, and all of a sudden I'm sitting at the uh, fire hall and the horn just starts going off. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, what am I doing? What? So I call the garage, what am I supposed to do with this thing? So as I'm talking to them, the Holy Spirit walked me through it and showed me what to do. I said, and I'm thinking, the Holy Spirit knows how to turn the alarm off on a school bus. Wow. So I said, okay, but he did it so quick, I didn't catch it. I said, Lord, you got to show me again. So I'm driving, get to the high school, got everything. I don't know what I did, but it didn't come on. So I'm like, why didn't it come on this time? So I go to Aura, did my high school run, and go to Aura. I said, well, I'm, would I just do what I did at the high school. The horn starts beeping again. I said, Lord, this is ridiculous. What is going on? So the Holy Spirit showed me this time slow. He said, when you stop to pick up a child, you arm your alarm. Because I'm looking at this light on my bus, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I got a light out on this thing already. Because it's only one side lit. So I'm thinking a light blue on the outside. Here it was saying, your bus is armed. So when I turn the bus off, the other side starts blinking to tell me, get up and check your bus for children. And it says, check for children. I'm like, is this awesome or what? So the Holy Spirit is saying, that's what you got to do. You got to get up, check your bus, even though there's no children on it, check your bus, go all the way in the back and push the button and it disarms the alarm. I'm sitting there, y'all, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, well, Lord, have mercy. This is awesome. I'm walking up and down my bus. I'm just praising God for whatever you need. Now, if he can teach me how to set and disarm an alarm on a bus, I'm telling you, what can't he do? And this is what happens 
when we get our garden prepared, plant the seed, and let the fruit come forth. All that fruit of the Spirit that I read to y'all, and y'all can go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, and read it again if you miss some of them. It's going to come forth. And you're not going to plant grape seed and get apples or pepper seed and get tomatoes unless you got them mixed together. You're going to plant, you're going to harvest what you sow. Because that's what God's Word tells us. For whatsoever you sow, and we hear that scripture, we immediately think, oh, something bad's going to happen. And we use it in a negative connotation towards people. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. And they'll look at you and give you that look. But whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. And it scares you. So it's like, oh, Lord. But the Lord is telling you, whatever you sow, don't, be dece- don't let this world deceive you. And the thinking, and that's what the enemy has done. We've sown our seed in good soil. But the enemy, through, I've even said it, Lord, forgive me. Don't expect money back because you gave money. But Lord, I need money. That's why I sowed my money. I need it. Expect that. You sow mercy, you're going rec- to reap mercy. You read it, that's what the Lord says. You show, sow patience, you reap patience. You sow love. You reap love. You sow hatred, you're going to reap hatred. For whatsoever a man soweth, you sow deceit. Whatever you sow, you will reap. And you're going to reap it in this. This is your soil. This is your garden. So pastor, stop them from reaping in your garden. No more reaping in pastor's garden. We have our own fields to cultivate, to plant, and to harvest. Amen? The only one that's allowed to reap from his garden is First Lady. (laughs) First Lady. Amen? And she has a garden too. He can reap from her garden. Amen? Plant your garden, saint. Get them ready. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. How does my soul prosper? When I plant the seed, good seed, in good soil, the pH is right. I don't have a zeal without knowledge, get all excited and anxious and rushing to do something and having first counted the cost or having first asked God, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Have you led me? Is this the way you want me to go? Don't be to the extreme. You got, remember I was talking about the pH, acid and basic? That's where you get sick. You want neutral. So your body is able to pull in the nutrients that it needs. And sometimes you're going to be sitting in the, in the service and, well, Lord, I'm not really feeling that right now. Take it anyway. You never know what's coming down the line. Well, you're going to need to remember that. Plant the word of God in your heart. And the enemy won't be able to plant seed in your soul. As we plant the word of God in our hearts, we will reap a great harvest if we don't give up. Thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. With God's word in our hearts, we can walk in confidence doing that, our prayer, knowing that our prayers are answered. Matthew 18, 19 says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. 1 John 5, 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, According to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Saints, plant good seed. Make sure your soil is good. Because the sower went out and he did plant good seed. But the area that, he, that some of the seed fell on wasn't good. It did take root. But the sun scorched it, the roots choked it, 
and the ground was too dry for it to, to hold up. So make sure that when the seed is planted, you go home and throughout the week, you're watering it. You're cultivating around it. You're pulling weeds and keeping rodents out. Those rodents, those evil spirits, wickedness and things, the things you're hearing on your Facebook, the things that you see and hear and read, don't let those rodents get to the seed that was planted on Sunday morning. Stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you.